Hey, welcome guys to another little video. Now, today's video is going to be dealing with a single slot. And this is also going to be designed in such a way where it's not so destructive in our, our, our project. And what I mean by destructive is if I go into my project right now and just one of my thing player walk run and jump okay if i move this script right here in the stream streaming assets it should break my project here the compiler will run and we will get lots and lots of errors we should and we don't okay so obviously i did not pick the right one. Let's let's pick the right one. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. We'll definitely pick one that's important. Or mouse look okay that sounds important weapons way yeah we'll do the weapons way I know that's on every single one of my weapons all right so we we basically sit there and broken our project because we took a script out that is required by another script okay this is very common in unity you get a reference to something and then next thing you know is you know you want to delete something and this happens and you know we can't clear it out or nothing else. we can't do anything until we actually fix this issue you know and there's no real way of fixing the main issues about that the only thing that we can actually do is make it a little bit more generic and you know use generic types but there are ways of getting around that as well now it's not foolproof there is certain classes that you're not going to be able to delete but i have designed something that's going to be really nice because this soldier class right here we're going to go into here and now I am going to put this in stream assets, which, you know, this is in here. This is, you know, we've got a button. Okay. And this button spawns a scent underneath the soldier. Okay. It's a job for the missile, but I don't like this script, so I want to get rid of it. So I'll put this in the streaming assets, and in theory, we should get compiler errors because we took a script out of the equation of everything, and you know it should have an issue with it. But look, it doesn't. No errors. We get some warnings because of stuff, but no errors. So I'm going to put it back. Okay, and everything gets restored. All right. And, you know, there's no hocus pocus or anything. And we've got our own weapons. Okay, menu weapon one, you know got a few things in here all right its job is just to push to uh the player prefab okay which is the soldier we just reference it here that's a temporary thing it will change later on but we just need something to get something tested right now okay so let's look at the code on how it's uh, actually let's see it in action here real quick okay if we 
Go up here, soldier weapon, okay? You've got two buttons here. Notice how we've got a hover, okay? If we hit the first button, we get a missile, right? And that's usually how a single slot works. But what if I want to take the single slot? I don't want a missile anymore, okay? I want this little spider, all right? Now, notice how I click on one or the other. It gives me an object, okay? So I basically replace it. But I only ever keep one, okay? Because this button is enforcing me. It's enforced that it only has this single thing and this one particular object, okay? So if I hit this spider button again, notice how it despawned it and I'm still good. If I go up here, I do that. And I can do any type of combination and it'll be fine. So basically this could be a single weapon and I pop up a menu and I want to have this gun, okay? Or I unequipped it and I don't want any gun equipped it right now. Or, you know, I have this weapon and then, oh, guess what? I want to change. Boom. There you go. That will change our weapon. You know, one single weapon equipped it to the next one. No big deal, right? Well, it kind of is. Because when we are going to use this for our FPS, which that's the goal of it, we are going to use this to do one thing. And that's for us to have array of weapons, maybe like four or five. Okay? And we're going to want to swap in between with a single button. So every uh, gun that we have equipped it, you know, maybe three. I want to be able to cycle in between three. And I want these to be very generic and everything. So, yeah. So let's take a look at some code. All right. And see this puppy in action. We've seen, well, we've seen it in action. So we got this right here, which is I slots okay so we got an interface of I slots okay then we have an interface of I weapon one which tells me melee okay we've got a reference to a transform and a single function here public slot weapon one and we take a gun if melee which is our up here variable does not equal weapon and melee does not equal null then we destroy something, okay? We destroy a game object. Get weapon. And, well, a gun's a, you know, a game object, so we probably destroy a game object. You know, pretty simple, okay? And if gun does not equal null, so if this right here equals null, passed in a null, then it won't do anything, okay? It won't try to set parents and stuff like that, which is pretty much what it does. It just takes the gun, parents it to the weapon transform. We zero out the local position, okay, and then we take melee and equal the weapon. Pretty simple, right? All right, nowhere in here does it reference anything besides I weapon. A game object and I weapon destroyer okay which is nothing but a game object probably some form of getter because it says get despawn object so it's an object and we're going to despawn it so yeah and we destroy it that's cool notice how this is a mono behavior Okay, now let's look at menu weapon one. So 
we have some namespaces for events, events and event system, the UI, okay, which tells me we use a lot of the UI functionality here. Now this is a public sealed class. So this sealed right here tells me that I cannot inherit from this at all. It's sealed. So the buck stops here. <laughs> and I inherit from menu item. Okay. So menu item is pretty much an abstract class. This is mostly right here for uh, reading purposes. That's it. Reading. Period. Done. Gone. All right. Maybe later on this might be some form of, you know, hey, let's get all my buttons and have them return uh, a list of strings or something. But, you know, don't hold your breath on it. Okay. I use it myself right now because I want to enforce that this is a menu item to me. I want my coding brain to think of this. Hey, this is a button. And that's all it really does. It's a menu item. That's it. Period. Done. It doesn't do anything else. And we have an interface of iWeapon1, iWeapon Destroyer. We use the enter, exit, and I pointer click. All these interfaces. Okay. We got a reference to the player. We've got a prefab. And we've got a spawn reference okay and we get some sprites here a highlight sprite and a normal sprite and an image component okay which is actually the image component in unity okay enter when my pointer enters something like you notice how like up on your editor and then you know you enter something and then a, a bubble pops up and it says stuff that's basically all it does. And when you ent when you move the cursor out of the uh, the button, you know, in Unity, it will call this function, which in turn sets the icon to normal. Ugh, I'm tired. Okay, so on pointer click is when the mouse button gets down, it calls on pointer click like a function. These must all three pu be public. They're interfaces, they're public, there's no private, you can't make them private or anything like that. It's just the way it is. Okay? So the spawned, if it's null, then we do a reference to i slots s equals player dot get component is. Okay? And all this does is get a component. That's it. Of i slot. Uh, 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 yeah, of an i. Uh, of i slots. And we instantiate something. Okay. Spawn, which is our reference, instantiates a w prefab, which is probably going to be a gun of some sort. Right? A gun of some sort or anything that we really need to spawn. And we're enforcing it to be in this slot class. So s slot equals this and we pass it the game object spawn yeah sounds cool i mean we literally seen it go on right here okay but notice this right here says this right well this script isn't a menu weapon one okay notice how it requires something completely different it doesn't and you're probably looking, what the heck, right? Well, the beauty about using interfaces is, see this right here? This is the interface, okay? So when we say this, if the overload of the function that we're calling requires an I weapon, it will use the I weapon. If it requires an I weapon destroyer, it will use I weapon destroyer. Okay, which we've seen down here. So let's look at the function slot. But notice how we pretty much go this again. It's because we're calling the destroy in the else statement. So if it's null, we do this. 
if it's not null, like spawn actually has something, it will call the destroy function. That's all it does. And notice how we don't have references to the player at all. The soldier, no references. We have a reference to a game object, but that's only temporary because we haven't established a class yet for holding references of the stuff. Things that we we shouldn't be using get component, get component, and thing. No, no, no. Nope, we're not going to be doing that. And we have a get weapon. Yep, pretty easy. Get despawn. You know. Alright, and we have a private set function. Set icon, which just pretty much changes the sprites. That's it. Bam. Easy peasy pleasy. Okay? Now let's see this magic happen in the interface. In the interface, it is a public interface I slots. And it has two functions in it. Interfaces cannot have member variables, and they also enforce these functions to be in the class. Okay? If we go into here and we do not have get despawn object, because that's one of the things that it enforces, right? Get despawn object. We go into Unity and let the compiler run because we've saved and everything, right? Then we get an error. Menu Weapon 1 does not implement interface member iWeaponDestroyer.getsDespawn object. So it's looking for the functionality, but it doesn't have it. Okay? I probably used the wrong one, but you get the gist of it. It does not enforce this function to be here. So it must have it. And that's the beauty about interfaces. They enforce you to make sure that all these functions must exist in the class that you're writing them to. Okay? Inheritance does not. And if you inherit from a script, you cannot have multiple inheritance. Okay? Like, how we have this, this stuff up here. If we use inheritance, I have to make another class for every single one of these. In order to use them, except this I pointer enter, exit, and stuff. I mean, it, they're interfaces, but they're Unity's interface, okay? They're Unity's thing. It's built into the engine. I can't manipulate it without the source code, okay? So, and two, you know, this, this class. Pretty much, this is all this class is going to do. Okay? You're pretty much seeing the lock, stock, and barrel of it. This takes care of enforcing that we only have one of a certain type. Okay? Because this is iWeapon1. Okay? So anything that has iWeapon1 in a button, when we push it to that, it will enforce that we only have that single game object underneath our hierarchy okay if we wanted another one we'd have to change this script to use a different interface but we could keep most of the same functionality okay so we could have like a hundred of them and you know the player can have only x amount of you know um uh, stuff this will become very very much more important when we get to our weapon customization and things it'll be very very much more important in that area because you know weapons hey you can only have one scope uh you can only have one trigger right i mean all very important things so i slots okay we have these two and then weapon one is just a game object get weapon okay and this is how interfaces have to be written 
And notice, I don't have anything in here besides interfaces. No soldier script like this or anything like that. So it keeps... I can't delete the interfaces without breaking my project. But the other scripts are all up for grabs. You see what I'm saying now? So it, it keeps us in a nice little structure... But it gives us the ability to be more flexible with certain things. And, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to delete a script and rewrite something else or use the interface to make like a whole slew of other classes. Like if I want to make a civilian who can only do melee, I pretty much have it right here. If I want to make a soldier that can only hit things with his hands or shoot a rifle I'd have to just concentrate on the other class to deal with just the rifles okay and the weapon script that we would be using can be completely dependent because we're only doing a game object right here so you know our gun can have its own single script It doesn't have to exist anywhere else besides on the game object in by itself. Okay. No references, no silly stuff. It's going to be super nice. You guys are going to love this code a lot better than the past. And yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you know, this made sense to you. I know it's kind of quick. But it was pretty basic stuff. If you watch the other videos, then you know a lot of this stuff probably by heart. After this video, you guys are probably going to be able to make your own. So the next few videos will probably be pretty boring for you. But who really knows, right? Who really knows? Well, I know because I've already scripted all this stuff out. I just haven't put it out there yet because I want to make it a little bit better than my previous other stuff let's say content so if you like the video you like it if you don't hit the dislike button if you want to smash that bell and let yourself know when there's new content coming to the channel please hit it so you know, there's the YouTube stuff. Like, hit, subscribe, and thanks for watching. This is War Over and Out.